My name is Mathieu Bossadet, and although I'm not a classically trained chef, my passion for cooking and refined palate have earned me great respect in the culinary industry. Join me as I taste my way around the world, one bite at a time. This is Taking a Bite, Ottawa. Today I'm with my friend Chef Michael at Whalesbone on Elgin Street. Michael, how you doing? Good, man. How are you, man? Very, very good. I mean, Whalesbone has been serving amazing seafood here in Ottawa for yeah. like 15 years. You guys are doing something really cool and new at the Elgin Street location, which is dry-aged beef. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your dry-aged program. Moving into this bigger space, mm -hmm. we realized that we were going to have a larger audience to right. captivate. Yeah. We just felt that we needed to like delve into a little bit more. You know, if we do seafood, as best as we can and yeah. try to do it the best. Exactly. And so we felt like if we were going to bring in beef, what was the marketplace missing in Ottawa? Right. And it hadn't seen that kind of yeah. dry aged beef program. We Good started amazing. small, but it's grown into quite yeah, the operation. Exactly. Uh, we've got beef from about six different places. Cool. We've got some Ontario, we've got some Alberta, we've got some USDA Prime. I'm a big fan of beef and steak and, and dry aging. I'm friends with yeah. lots of chefs that do dry aging as well. And I mean, you guys have an amazing setup. Um, I mean, there's identification of the different cuts uh, when they were put there in the dry aging room. Um, but obviously with this whole process, it's, it's not a cheap one. No. And when you dry age, there's trimming and cleaning of the product. I mean, I guess there's like 20 to 30% uh, loss, however, you end up with a way better product. Yeah, way back when all beef was dry aged. It was all right? hung for a period of time. It was all yeah. hung for at least like 20, 21, yep. 28 days. Exactly. Right? And then they would start processing it. Right. And that's because, you know, we need to allow the muscles to relax yeah. and become and, more tender. And become more tender, yeah. right? right? And I mean, so, it's a totally different experience in oh, the yeah. mouth and you, the, the aroma, the flavor, I mean, it, it makes a big difference. Do you think we can cook something today? Because I mean, I'd love to, I'd Whoa. love to cook one, see one, see the processing, uh, try it, and you know, obviously eat it. Yeah, let's yeah. check it out. Yeah. All right. This is our ribeye. This is our ribeye. So this is. Uh, nice. We're sitting at like 40 days age. You saw what it looks like down there. Now you see what it looks like here. The aging has been trimmed up, which yeah. is really important. You want to have that beautiful, delicious aged taste inside, but you don't really want to have the strong outside. Right? It'd be a, like kind of eating a little leather. Ribeye too is my favorite cut because it's really well marbled. Uh, I mean, lots of people like tenderloin, but I mean, ribeye, you got to uh, have that fat, right? Yeah. For so, sure. All right, sure. so we're gonna cut one of these. Yeah. About, well, how big? About 16 ounces? Yeah, or? yeah, we're gonna shoot for 16. We'll all see. Right. I got the scale here, so uh, we'll we're put gonna it on see there how good I am. Oh my goodness. We gotta try and do this in one nice smooth cut, too. You don't want a jagged line. Just do it, man. Don't be scared of the meat. Nice. Nice. Looks great. I love it. Yeah. And that marbling throughout, too, will really add some juiciness to that steak. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah, you can smell that dry aging, eh? Yeah. Beautiful. All right, let's see. Little, like, nutty Do you nuances. think this is 16 ounces? I don't know. I think it's, it's pretty gonna close. It's going to be close. Put it on. All right, here we go. What do we got? Uh, 16.5. <laughs> pretty what? good for a first yes. timer. That is pretty darn good. You, I mean, it's almost impossible to always get a perfect cut. That's pretty good, man. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with myself. Yeah. Okay, so cool. have you tied steaks no, before? No, I have not tied a steak before. No. No. Okay, so basically what I do, I always go wrap it around twice. Okay. twice. So what is the value? Making sure that it cooks evenly. Right, you okay. Know? Really. Yep. And you know, sometimes those ribs, right? Like with this big exactly. eye here. Can so sometimes those tissues get, will like, kind of fall apart fall on the steak and, you, yeah. and then you won't have that nice uniform thickness. So that'll help with that. Seasoning, for me, I like to be pretty liberal. Always important to season liberally. And as you can see, Michael's seasoning from not too close, right? You want to kind of have a nice even coating of seasoning, which yeah. is awesome. Kosher salt, salt okay. and uh, pepper. So you and can that's get... all you need. That's all you need for a perfect steak. That's all you if need. If you have a really good flavorful steak, some good marbling and some aging, you don't really want to add anything else. I mean, you want, to, you want the meat to shine. And that's, that's my rule of thumb is salt and pepper. Yeah, well, we're spending all this time, like, developing we're bringing flavor. in meat, yeah. like, two months before we're actually, yeah, exactly. or you know, we're going to get to even use it. I mean, if you're like, going to develop flavor in a process like that, why would you taint it with other flavors? Yeah, season the other side. All right, perfect. So, 
what yeah. doneness are we aiming for? My personal preference with the rib is like a little over the medium rare side, right. but under the medium side. Right. You want to render the fat, you right? Want to in, in, the a, fat. in a rib, exactly. uh, rib or a rib eye or whatever you're doing, with that fat, if you want to get it to be tender and soft in the middle, and enjoy you, need you, to, need to, you need to have that medium rare at least. Yeah. Anything yeah, 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 under yeah. that, it'll be tough and chewy and you don't want that. Yeah. So we need a pan like smoking hot, right? And that's key. I mean, you get that pan piping hot. With that smoke, you know that your pan's ready to give that ultimate crust on that steak. So this is just a straight canola. Doesn't instill flavor, high smoke point. Here we go. You want to hear that sear as soon as it hits the pan. Otherwise, you're going to be poaching your steak in oil, which you do not want. So now we moved it around, so getting, all those, around, getting all those like spices that kind of trickled away, and the getting that, and the that crusting. seasoning, crusting. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that nice golden brown crust, that color. That's what we want to instill before we put it into the uh, yeah. fancy 2,000 degree Fahrenheit oven so that we can get that doneness throughout. We're going to put a little garlic in here. So adding some crushed garlic and some fresh herbs to the oil will help add a little bit of aroma. We're gonna add a little bit of butter and then we'll taste that you know? steak as it's searing. Oh yeah, you can get that uh, that smell of the thyme is just you know, and the garlic. We need smell of vision. Eh? Smell of vision. That's my next big thing. My next big thing. Smell of vision. Wow, that smells amazing. All right, so at that point, we're uh, going we're into good the to go. Look at that, eh? It even pulls out. Perfect. So if you were going to be doing a steak at home, you can still put it in your oven. Yeah. I normally do 450. 450 is good. Buy a few steaks and try them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you'll have a few steaks. It's really trial by error, right? Yeah, kind exactly. Of thing. And, and once even... you get comfortable with it, you'll make a perfect steak every time. So, I mean, yeah. it's important to finesse how long you sear your steaks, what temperature your pan is, and how hot your oven is, and you can make an amazing steak at home. All right, are we almost ready? Oh, yeah. All right, uh, look at that. I nice. think we're looking pretty good. I'm old school, and I just yep. do that. Perfect. I like the feel of that. Awesome. All right, and now one of the most important things that most people won't do at home again is rest your steak. So this will help keep the flavors inside, the juices inside. This is it. We're gonna let that rest. All right. And then we're gonna uh, so we're gonna do the matake. Yes. Dish. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's work on the mushrooms. It's mushrooms, but I mean, I kind of focused on the butter and the marrow. Look at That's that. That's the butter and the marrow. Mm, 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 mm. So we render bone uh, marrow. We render bone marrow right. and then whip it up with the butter. So we get these nice uh, little kind of clusters Beautiful. of mataki mushrooms. Yep. And we'll just kind of quarter them. Perfect. Just because we want to kind of get a nice roast on them. And yeah, and keep that meaty consistency. Exactly, kind of separated. Say, showcase yeah. kind of like the meatiness yeah, the, of the yeah. mushroom. For me, actually, yeah. I like starting my mushrooms in a dry pan. Okay, perfect. Everything's a process, right? So I, why I'm, in the dry pan? Mushrooms have a lot of water. Right. So we're getting we evaporate rid that of water, some of that water Very before interesting. we kind of... That's a great and idea. Get and a we're nice getting little toasted, dry, right? Dry what? toasty char, which is like... Add some flavor and like aroma to the mushroom. From here now, I'm going to kind of hit it in... With some canola oil. Hit it with some canola. With these guys too. Kosher salt. People, some people, they shouldn't season your mushrooms. I do yeah. a little. Especially with like the size of these, you really want to try to right. get some of that salt to penetrate exactly. into the mushy. So I'm just going to add a little olive oil as well. Perfect. All right. Just give it a little bit of flavor, but yeah. not enough that it's going to make everything burn. With a mushroom like that, an olive oil is a really good compliment. Perfect. It is, for sure. And, and not then, the best compliment. I'm talking butter and bone marrow. Yeah. This is so exciting. Look at that. We got the bone marrow butter. Oh wow! I'll put a little bit of thyme in oh, here. That's beautiful. Mushrooms and thyme is kind of man makes sense, right? Absolutely. Makes sense. Makes sense. Beautiful. Oh man! Back again to that smell of vision, right? I mean, if we it could smell so that. Good. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah. So wow. from here, I got. The oven down here at 400. Yep. We'll go in there for like uh, five minutes. Perfect. Kind of thing. All right. Perfect. 
Okay. Mushrooms are ready. I can hear them sizzling away yep. in there. Yep. Uh, so I want to re-therm the steak. Yeah. No, look at that, eh? Excellent. Oh my god, that looks so good. Got some good. I can't uh, wait. All right. Good juiciness. So, so we're just yeah, get that yeah. outside a bit warm so that we uh, yeah. we're have an gonna, enjoyable steak experience. We're gonna pop that back in there. Perfect. I'm gonna go to town in the mushroom lands. All right. We're out here. Beautiful. We're sizzling back. Mm, and then I just want to hit a little, little sherry vinegar in here. All right. It's all about it's balance, right? Yep. So, you know, you have your salty, your sweet, your sour. You get a good balance of everything and, and you're good, you know? And that's the other key when cooking at home. I mean, a good balance of flavors will end up with the best taste of your dish, right? Yes. Okay. Get, get that butter Beautiful. over there. Look at that. Oh, man. I hear this steak is woohoo. Mm, 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 mm. You can see that heat. That's really nice crust. Yeah, look at developed that. Developed on there. Oh yeah, good doneness too. Having a finishing salt exactly, on your meat, yeah, right? Exactly. This nice fatty cut. We serve just with like a little chimichurri. That's so. There you go. Steak. So I mean, that's a forty day. Dry aged, day. I think that's Angus, isn't it? Yeah. A beautiful Angus prime. ribeye, prime steak yeah. from Canada. Our beautiful mushrooms, bone marrow butter. I mean, oh my goodness. Mm. I think we've done it. I think we should probably uh, take a bite at a table. Eat. What do you say? Yeah. Let's do it. I think so. Okay. So now we get to do the best part of this. Yeah. And try it. All right. I think so too. All right. I'm going to go with this nice little piece here because I see that marbling that I really like. Yeah. I'm gonna go with this little piece on the end. I like the, yeah, I like, I like that side. Yeah, that, that side's a nice side of the ribeye. Mm -hmm. Wow, ah, man. I wanna take a bite too. Mm. Oh my God. It's tender though, huh? The, the fat inside is really nice and tender. The meat's tender. Mm -hmm. You really taste that dry aging. Like, I mean, it's, it's there. And I mean, uh, even at 40, at 40 days, it's perfect. But you still get good beefiness too? Yeah, exactly. And that's important. If you go a little too long on dry aging, you're gonna start getting these hints of, of cheese, almost like Parmesan, right? Yeah. And I mean, I like the flavor of beef, and you kind of lose that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, and you're looking for something funky, go for it. But if you really want a good steak with good flavor, this 40 days perfect. It's good, huh? Oh, that's amazing. All right, we gotta try the mushrooms too. Yeah. Okay. It can't all be about the meat. Mushrooms. You taste that bone marrow. Mm -hmm. Nice meaty mushroom. Mm -hmm. Man, that's perfect. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, it's been fantastic. I mean, you're doing amazing stuff with your dry aging. Mm. Um, you guys now not only do amazing seafood in Ottawa, you guys are doing amazing dry aged steak in Ottawa, and that's phenomenal. Thanks a lot for having me, and thanks for letting us prepare this amazing meal. Yeah, thanks. And for sharing me. that knowledge of dry aging with uh, with everyone because mm -hmm. it's something that's new, and not everybody does it, not everybody knows about it, yeah. but definitely has to experiment it. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah.